The Mr. Supranational 2024 competition has concluded and none other than Fazile Nkise from South Africa has been announced as the new Mr. Supranational, which is very exciting because he is the very first black man to ever be crowned Mr. Supranational. Let's talk about Mr. Supranational a little bit because this year they are having Niku Panajo from South Africa over as a host for both Mr. and Miss Supranational. Now, I must personally say seeing him at Mr. Supranational was so nice because I loved him presenting Survivor. South Africa. It was one of my favorite shows and I used to be so obsessed until it was cancelled unfortunately. And he also hosted Miss South Africa 2021. So I do love Niku Panajo as a host. I think he is fantastic. And then I also love how they introduce all of the main by having them walk out carrying their country's flags on their shoulders. I think it's so symbolic and so emblematic of the responsibilities that they bear in representing their countries internationally. And I just think Mr. Supranational has always been the perfect masculine counterpart for Miss Supranational. The two entities complement each other so, so well, in my opinion. I think that... Miss Supranational wouldn't be the same without Mr. And Mr. Supranational obviously wouldn't be the same without Miss. I just think it's so lovely that they have these two separate competitions, which are so different in feel and vibe and nature, and yet they complement each other so beautifully. For the swimsuit part of Mr. Supranational, I feel like swimsuit competitions in male pageantry, you know, are more an overall presence and confidence thing rather than the intricate movements of technique and those types of things that we look for in female pageantry. I feel like male pageantry gets to be more fun and sort of chaotic at times. Most of the time, the men on stage do not take themselves too seriously or try to overcompensate in any way or overperform and I do feel like that is a bit refreshing when watching male pageantry although I do still appreciate all of the effort and technique and thought that goes into female pageantry and their performances. Male pageantry is a little bit more different. It's much less Uh, rigid I feel like and I feel like there are less expectations placed on men in male pageantry then also I just also want to add to that I am not as impatient actually with extra segments when it comes to male pageantry you guys know that Miss Supranational always have lots of segments in both their male and female pageants with you know, different outfits and things like that. And perhaps it's because I'm not as overly invested in male pageantry and Mr. Supranational to be exact. You know, there is no rush to the finish line for me and I can just appreciate the show in its entirety and as it was designed to be for the audience instead of just focusing on certain aspects of the competition in order to analyze and evaluate you know I can just enjoy instead of being in full-on concentration mode all the time and so I feel like I'm a bit more patient with male pageantry for example the segment uh, where they were advocating for peace it was so cool and actually to be honest so appropriate because let's face it it's young able-bodied men like these who are always the majority of the casualties and victims when it comes to war and I could appreciate this because there's no rush to the finish line for me with Mr. Supranational as opposed to Miss Supranational where we're all in such a hurry just to get to the next segment and find out who is placing where. Male pageantry is much more relaxing for me. 
And obviously, the gents all came out in their tuxes and tuxedos as well later on. And honestly, there's not much we can say on that other than, you know, they're all dashing. Some of them added a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of razzle-dazzle to their tuxes. But there's only so much you can do, you know, without being too outrageous. And as you can see, I'm easily pleased when it comes to male pageantry. I mean... How handsome was Mr. Venezuela? That is, his handsomeness is absolutely insane. But when it did come to the top five, however, many argued that Mr. Philippines was at a disadvantage since the rest of the top five could all hear the question and therefore had more time to think about it, which, you know what, is actually something that I do agree with. I feel like poor Mr. Philippines was first up and he had to answer the question first, which he did pretty well. Um, but then I feel like the person who gets to answer last has the biggest advantage in this. So there's that. There is that. That is an argument that one can make. And it, in my opinion, is pretty valid. I do feel like perhaps they should have been all asked different questions or there should have been some methods to prohibit the rest of the top five from hearing each other's answers. Now, there are some other complaints as well. Um, but with the top five thing, with that being said, I think Mr. South Africa was fantastic throughout uh, the entirety of Mr. Supernational and also definitely deserved his win. In fact, you know, pageantry is very subjective and anyone who manages to actually place in my opinion, usually does have what it takes to be a great title holder and ambassador for the organization. Sometimes it really just comes down to the particular set of people who have been selected through fate and destiny, if you will, to sit at the judging panel and decide to like you in particular. Whereas if it were another day, another set of people, someone else might have won. So it is sort of a destiny and luck type of thing. And you know what? It's so sad to me that sadly there are also a lot of people saying that Fez only won due to the fact that he's black and there hasn't been a black Mr. Supranational, so they were due to crown one. And I honestly think that it's just such an insult to him, you know, to undermine his hard work and dedication and intelligence. I mean, he is a medical doctor, for goodness sake. Uh, by saying that he only won due to his skin color, it's such an insult. So yes, as I've said, South African doctor and former Mr. World first runner-up, Dr. Fazile Mkize is Mr. Supranational 2024. He has such a dignity and stoicism about him. And to me, he really embodies the inherent masculinity that a Mr. Supranational should possess. The moment he went and got the flag, you know, after he won from the crowd, it was such a pretty picture, him with the flag and his little trophy and his sash on. I don't mean to sound too South African, but his win did have slight Rugby World Cup vibes. But instead of a team hyping each other up, it was these men from all over the world who competed against him, supporting him in the end, which was also really beautiful and emotional. So, of course, I am expecting to see him as a judge at Miss Supranational tonight, where Brioni Govender will represent South Africa at, you know, Miss Supranational and hopefully win. There have never been, to my knowledge, uh, from the same country in the same year, a Mr. and Miss Supranational crowned. So imagine if Brioni won Miss Supranational tonight. Many actually think, however, that Fez's win at Mr. Supranational will limit Brioni's chances at the crown for, you know, the fear that a South African victory at both will anger fans and, and alienate fans. But I wholeheartedly believe in the fairness and integrity of the Miss Supranational organization. So I personally do not necessarily subscribe to that idea. 
And I know that Mr. Supranational South Africa is in no way affiliated with the Miss South Africa organization. Um, the Miss South Africa organization doesn't dabble in male pageantry at all. And so it's a completely different and unassociated organization in South Africa sending South Africa's male counterpart to Mr. Supranational. But I am hoping that Fez will be invited to the Miss South Africa coronation next month, you know, which is due to happen on the 10th of August. I would love it if he were to attend. I would think that during the past few weeks, him and Brioni have, you know, met, obviously, and gotten to know each other. And I feel like next month is going to be just as much a farewell for Brioni as it will be for Natasha, who was the crowned Miss South Africa. Because let's be honest, it has been Brioni putting in, you know, the international work that it takes to be a Miss South Africa. She has been so responsible. She has been representing us beautifully, regardless of the results of tonight. So I do feel like hopefully Brioni will be honored in some way at Miss South Africa as well, but that's neither here nor there. Um, hopefully, Mr. Supranational, Mr. Fez, will be invited to Miss South Africa as well. I think that that would be lovely, even if he doesn't uh, serve any particular purpose. You know, just for him to be there, I think that would be wonderful, and I would love to meet him. So, we should. We should try to make that happen let me know what you guys think thank you guys so much um congratulations dr fez once again on your well-deserved win i would love it if you guys subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you in the next one bye